Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tichiyama for another episode of Business in Hawaii. We are going to be discussing from a very business investor point of view all about a small piece of the island of Oahu that has become a global center for hotels, for retail, for restaurants. It's called Waikiki. In Ololo Hawaii, or the Hawaiian language, it means blowing of water. Waikiki. And it used to be very swampy in the past. And the Alawai Canal has become a major drainage canal uh, for the area. And now, through the years, from 60s, the 70s, and now in 2019, with nearly 2 million Japanese tourists last year, rising numbers of Chinese, Korean, North American, of course, and Canada, and even Europe. So it has become a global destination. To speak more from the investor and how to achieve success in the business world of Akiki, we have Mr. Andrew or Andy Starn is the Senior Vice President and Retail Market Expert at Cushman and Wakefield Cheney Brooks. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you and thank you to ThinkTech for having me. Great being here. Well, you're a local person, right? And, and you went away from college. Tell me about your background a little. So I was born and raised in Hawaii, grew up in Kaimuki area, um, was fortunate enough to go to Punahou School, and then graduated from there, went to the University of Colorado in Boulder, and then moved back after a little bit of travel post-school, and uh, spent 16 years at C.B. Richard Ellis doing predominantly retail, focused in Waikiki, and then now I'm at Cushman Wakefield Cheney Brooks and doing the same thing, focused in on Waikiki, specifically within the retail markets, and then the other resort markets around the state. Now, Waikiki, you know, it, it, to many visitors, they just know it as a place to stay and then walk around and shopping. Tell me what's unique about Waikiki to you. Well, you know, I think if you look at retail across the country, what's amazing is that on Oahu, we have two areas that are kind of globally known and globally strong performers and strong performers in the United States. And one is Kalakau Avenue and you have retailers that do phenomenal there, and you have Almoana Center. And so the fact that this little island on Oahu in the middle of the Pacific has these two kind of retail meccas is just incredible. Well, why don't we turn to the first slide and, and see what's going on. Now, uh, and this is all about uh, retail and rents. So, uh, describe the scene to me. So this is, you know, for people in Hawaii, this will look a little strange. The biggest reason it looks strange is because these are how people across the United States look at numbers. It's per square foot per year. Okay. So year. these, you know, you have to divide them all by 12 to okay. get to the right. per square foot per month, which we talk about in oh, retail in Hawaii. Right. But what you see is, now, now the other thing we got to clarify is this is taking New York City as a whole, Los Angeles as, as a whole, because New York probably has six or seven of the right, top right. 10 streets right. in the whole country. But Fifth Avenue, they have, you know, rents up to $4,000 per square foot per year, you know. So it's just an extremely high volume, expensive street. But what's surprising is the fifth strongest street in the country is Kalakau Avenue. Wow. And so you have New York, you have Rodeo Drive, you have the Union Square area of San Francisco, you have the Miracle Mile of Chicago. But then you also have Waikiki, and Waikiki has rents of $38 to $40 per square foot per month, you know, for the very best portion of that street. All right. Uh, so this kind of frames our discussion. Uh, Waikiki is really up there, uh, uh, competing against other major uh, retail centers in North America. I think Waikiki is probably the most underrated street mm -hmm. in the country. It's open 365 days of the year. It has a global tourist base from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. And so it's just such a tremendous area for these brands to you know, have sales and connect with their customers. And then we actually have amazing local retailers 
I mean, global world class competitors that have you know grown in Waikiki to be as as good as they are, and so it's really an an amazing retail market. And and the global uh, brands are here. The, the Prada's, the Louis Vuittons, and Tiffany's are, are here. And, and one of the ways um, they really uh, kind of leverage their brand is to showcase their brand to visitors from all over the world, from Asia, from North America and Europe. And so uh, Waikiki doubles as a kind of place to promote their brand uh, to global visitors. Absolutely. And so, you know, you have the almost 2 million Japanese visitors. You have somewhere between 140, 170,000 Chinese visitors, 500,000 Canadian visitors coming every year, 400,000 Australian and New Zealand visitors. And so one, it's an incredibly diverse market, right. and two, it's an extremely productive market. Like those luxury brands, these stores can be one of their top five stores in the world, wow. and it's here on Kalakau well, Avenue. Well, why don't we go to the next slide? And this is all about uh, flights to, uh, uh, to Oahu, and we're just talking about the uh, global visitor you know, uh, destination, which is uh, uh, Oahu and Waikiki now. So I think what's great about this slide is it just really is a visual on how diverse Waikiki mm. is. And I think that's just hugely to the benefit of Waikiki, and it's to the benefit of Hawaii as a state. I mean, this is where a huge amount of the general excise tax revenue is generated, and it's just so important because on some level, the money from Waikiki, from those hotel jobs, construction jobs, you know, it's kind of supporting the rest of the entire state. And so it's just an extremely important part of Hawaii and Hawaii being a, a great place to live and work. And, you know, what you see here is just that it's global in nature. And so when we had things like the 2008 recession, you know, the, the f international visitors propped up Waikiki oh, and right, it's still, right, right. you know, it, it was off, right. but it wasn't off 40, 50 percent. And, you know, it was strong. And then when you had, you know, an event like the Japanese earthquake and tsunami, which I personally was like, this is horrible. There's going to be no sales. And really the U.S. domestic market kept, you know, Hawaii and Waikiki afloat and things were still so relatively we strong. So we our bets. <laughs> in, yeah, in visitor, as exactly. A visitor and it's not just, just one group yeah. that Hawaii depends yeah. upon. It's really an international grouping. Next slide, please. So I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, this is about malls. And, 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 and I see number 10 is Ala Moana, which is one of the largest malls in, in, in the country and in the world. And, and again, I'm surprised because I wouldn't have uh, put Ala Moana Shopping Center in the top 10. Yeah, so Ala Moana, in terms of sales product productivity, is the 10th strongest mall in the country. But some of these other malls I see are, are huge. <laughs> They're like unbelievably uh, large uh, places. Uh, and and um, like the Century City one is, is, is in L.A., uh, extraordinary uh, large. Um, so what do you attribute to Ala Moana having that type of uh, visitor spending? You know, I think Ala Moana benefits from, one, the million residents on Oahu. And I think it is, you know, if you're going to have a big shopping experience, you're going to go to Ala Moana because it has everything but then it also is close to Waikiki. Right. And so, the, you know, on a visitor trip, they'll spend one day going and shopping, especially a you know, Japanese, Chinese, Korean visitor, they'll spend a day and go to Al Moana and shop. And, and so, you know, I think it also benefits from, from those visitors shopping at the mall. Well, this is a, also a slide that uh, shows that, um, again, uh, there's, uh, in spite of, uh, Hawaii in an isolated location, it does attract high spending visitors, uh, especially from Asia. And uh, we, we're going to go further in our discussion about if you were a business investor, uh, how, how would you find um, uh, Alamano or, or Waikiki as a place to do business? And it must be uh, not that simple. I mean, you have a lot of competition out there. It, it's, it's like, uh, where do you begin to really see um, what to prioritize? What, what, what advice would you uh, uh, say first off to anybody who's even thinking, contemplating <coughs> of opening a shop in, uh, along Kalakaua Avenue? So there's a couple different components of that. If we're talking about people coming in to have a retail business in Waikiki or Ala Moana, I think most important is it's getting the right advice, getting your support from your legal support, right. your real estate right. support, you know, your tax support. Right. 
um, all of these different pieces to do it right is a really important um, and you know people that can get that right support make good decisions you know they have the right business from you know their restaurant experience or retail experience from where they're coming from if that all gets coupled together I think you see groups that are very successful um, but it and, also very local advice. I mean, people who are expert in the market have seen how others have failed or succeeded. Yeah, Hawaii is unique. It has its own nuances. It has its own things that can make you do really well or, or not be successful. And so as you, you know, getting those things right is a, is a huge, you know, piece of whether you're successful or not. We'll get back to a drill down, especially on the real estate side after we take this very important break. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. We are back with our guest. Andy Starn, and we're having a very drill down discussion on how to succeed in retail in Waikiki. And we've seen through Andy's slides how Waikiki, Kalakaua Avenue, Alamoana Shopping Center are ranked in the top 10 of the most successful destinations in the US. So we're going to go back to some decisions that investors make, and um, they're going to rely on local experts. You're absolutely right. And you're one of the local experts or, or that can provide such guidance. And how would you go about choosing the right uh, retail um, location? Yeah, so, you know, the thing about Waikiki is that it's not apparent. In terms of what's available, it's such an opaque market. Mm -hmm. That if you go online or go on LoopNet or what CoStar right. or one of these right. listing agencies, you're only going to see what's empty and being marketed for available. Right. The reality is you have to work with someone that's tracking mm. the future lease terminations oh, right, right. and knowing what's coming up, right. you know, six to 18 months before, wow. yeah. because that's really when decisions are being made for these really prime locations. So it's about getting in front of you know, what may be available in two to three years. And, you know, some of these brands are making decisions that far in advance. And when you're, when you're talking about right. tens of millions of dollars right. in potential sales right. per year, it, it is that important That's to right. be thinking that far ahead. Now, for some uh, investors who, who also um, uh, will open business, uh, businesses, uh, um, there's the uh, significant area of leasehold that is uh, kind of... Um, not, uh, not that well known in, on the mainland. And when you buy properties, uh, usually on the mainland, it's fee simple. Mm -hmm. Here, if you want to buy a building and the land and, and go forth and do a business there, how is that different in Hawaii? So, I mean, most investors coming in, if they can buy fee simple, mm -hmm. they can buy that fee simple interest, that's what they want. Right. Now, in Waikiki, you know, a big portion of the land is not fee simple. Right. And what ends up being important is that underlying lease. Right. How long of no one right. rent do you have? How often does it reset? Um, you know, it's really an interesting story. This goes all the way back to the late 1800s. And the Hawaiian monarchy was looking forward and kind of said, our people may have issues going into the coming centuries. And they set up 
a trust for health care, a trust for education, a trust for orphans, and they left those land holdings to those groups. And so a lot of the land in Waikiki is actually owned by Queen Leleokalani, Queen Emma, Kamehameha Schools, and so those, the, the money from those lands are now going to support health care, sure. support education. And so that legacy um, is still, you know, a lot of the leasehold interest. Now, the, the, the leased fee, the ground lessee who ends up having a hotel on right, top of it of or having a retail right. center, you know, if you have a, a long known amount of known rent and you have, you know, I mean, ideally it's a... 40 years right. or longer of a lease term, it, it becomes almost, so it's very close to owning a fee right. simple property because that residual value is so far out. And so, I mean, it still is a extremely strong investment. The other thing I would say is, you know, if you're buying existing real estate that's already there, then you know what you have and that's an easier right. thing to accomplish as a buyer. Um, to do development in Hawaii is oh. extremely challenging. And, and as we know, Waikiki is a very special design district yeah. with onerous rules and regulations, even for local people to uh, uh, construct or, or uh, something on a, on a uh, open lot has many, many restrictions. And I think it's, you know, this is really an area where you have to be working with good advisors. I mean, you probably even want to be working with one of the local Hawaii developers that do that every day to get it right because there's there's so much to accomplish in your goals. Now the flip side of that is that if you own real estate in Hawaii, everything, all these difficult steps you had to go through to become a successful property owner, it's that hard for someone else to come in behind you. That's right. Yeah. And so once right. you own real estate in Hawaii, right. in a certain way you're insulated right. and protected from because it is that difficult and that means that you know, your neighbor can't just go and emulate your success easily. It takes so much more than that. You so, have a very uh, uh, huge advantage if you very, own yeah. the land. That, that's where it all begins. And, yeah. you know, even leases, if they right. can get structured yeah. in the right way, you know, it's very valuable because oh, no. it's so difficult for it yeah. to be reproduced, especially on an island. Yeah, and, and leasehold is, is, is something, you know, back in the 40s and 50s, was a way to have businesses, you know, spend their money on growing their business, not buying land. I mean, that's uh -huh. one of the original thoughts behind leasehold. Uh, but you're correct. Just because it's leasehold doesn't mean it's a obstacle. That there are ways to look at it as uh, a way to, you know, uh, establish your business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we, we want to talk about hotels now, okay. and, and um, that's the other category of uh, major investor interest is on on the hotel scene in Waikiki, that rarely um, there's transactions. Of course, the last boom in transactions came in the 80s when many Japanese firms uh, bought uh, hotels along uh, Kalakaua and, and all over uh, Waikiki. Uh, and, but the, the fact remains that during the last uh, 20 years, there haven't been many new hotels built. And during the 70s, the Biltmore was uh, destroyed. Uh, the High Regency uh, was uh, built. Kaiser Permanente was, uh, was raised for the Waikiki uh, Hawaii uh, Prince Hotel. But the uh, story of the last 15 years was in timeshare. And the Princess Kailani uh, that's going to be uh, uh, built on that side along Kalakau, it's very rare to see a new hotel. Uh, but how, how is the hotel, um, uh, I guess, market uh, evolving today? Are, is it a uh, place where investors get a huge return, or is it very, very um, uh, a challenge for outside investors to uh, have a good ROI on owning hotel properties? So, you know, Hawaii is probably the number one hotel market in the country in terms of average daily rate. So typically, you know, New York would have been the number one market and Hawaii is actually stronger than New York currently. On top of that, you have a market that has, ver you know, instead of hotel rooms growing and there being more hotels, no, they're actually yeah. being reduced. It's <laughs> getting right. changed to timeshare. Right. Yeah. It's getting changed to condo, condo hotel. hotels. Yeah. So those two market influencers actually make owning hotels yeah. extremely valuable in Hawaii. And I, I mean... It's a, it's a great category. I think it's something that you see investors like, you know, Blackstone and um, Mide and, you know, these different investors coming in and buying here because those, you know, those pieces of the market make it a really compelling 
argument. Now, return on investment is all based on your purchase price, so it really depends <laughs> on, on what you're paying for the property. But, I mean, I think to own a piece of Waikiki and, and to be in this market, I mean, I think it's, it's an extremely valuable well, real yeah, estate. Yeah, I think you're correct. For uh, many uh, um, uh, institutional investors or many large investors, it's uh, iconic. They have an iconic building on Kalakau Avenue. It's a great branding uh, kind of uh, uh, you know, promotion for their own firm or for their own organization. But you're right. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are these issues of, of uh, hotel management firms to work with them, the Hiltons and Marriott's and uh, Starwoods and so forth. And also to um, deal with um, uh, some of the renovations that have to come up in the future. A lot of the hotel infrastructure has not really been uh, um, uh, changed uh, in 20, 30 years. Some of them go back uh, to statehood, <laughs> to the, most of the Gold Coast condominiums, uh, that is. But the hotel uh, market, I think, will have a, a very uh, uh, exciting year. This year, I think, will be the return of a lot of transactions along uh, Kalakaua and, and a major interest, major focus on that area. And then, we, I know we're running out of time, but uh, to also focus on an area that you, you think that um, uh, Waikiki is a gem for dining or culinary experiences. And how did that evolve? But what you have is, a, a, it's really become a, a foodie street. Oh. You have, uh, you know, things like Paia Fish Market, oh, right. um, you know, Uncle's Pizza in the Lelo Hotel that are, that are right. waiting to open. Across the street, you have Marukami Udon, right, right. which is one of the... Uh, the highest. Oh, I see lines out the street. Yes, uh, one of the street. four Korea. places in Waikiki oh, that has a line almost oh, oh, every day. Around the corner. You know, there. so, yeah. um, you know, I think what's been happening on Kuhia with Michael Mina, the street, right. and then the third floor restaurants like Strip Steak, right. um, you know, Kona Grill... Uh, up on the third floor of International Marketplace. I mean, I think there's been a lot of awesome dining right. that's, that's come, to, come to Waikiki. And then you have just huge volumes out of restaurants like Wolfgang Steakhouse, right. Duke's, Cheesecake Factory. I mean, there's probably over 12 restaurants in Waikiki that are doing over $10 million a and, year and in you sales. Were, you, you were involved in the International Marketplace from way back. Am I correct? Or, my, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my... Um, First, you know, really coming to understand Waikiki yeah. from a commercial real estate perspective goes all the way back to the old international yeah. marketplace. Yeah. I was leasing the back half Waikiki Jeez. Town Center right. for Queen I'm getting to work with really awesome people there. And it was really an education into the market. Yeah. And it's, it's a, that, that little piece of Waikiki I got to, you know, discover and learn about is is why I made the decision to kind of give up all my business outside of Waikiki right. and really focus in doing commercial real estate there. And that has been a transformation. I would not have expected that type of fine dining and shopping uh, that uh, overlaid that, you know, really, really um, scattered, uh, you know, marketplace like before. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's, it was a massive investment that they put in there. And, it, you know, it's getting more and more foot traffic. It's getting mm. better and better. And, you know, I'm really hopeful that it's going to really hit its full stride and be a super successful <laughs> okay. project. Now, do we have one more slide uh, left, the fifth slide? Oh, there it is. Uh, we come back <laughs> to the end, and uh, uh, we have two more. Uh, this, uh, uh, this defines kind of like the retail area uh, and, and the uh, um, hotel area right there. And you can see that it is not a big area. No, and, and you know, this is kind of what we typically track in terms of Kalakaua Avenue. And it's not, it's even beyond the very best portion. The very best portion of Kalakaua starts at Prada, Comhart, Max Mara, right, right, right where you intersect with Lewis Street. There's a Louis Vuitton. There's right. a, a brand new Tiffany that right. I think might be the most beautiful store in, it, in it, North it, America. They're very low rise in that area. They're not big places. Yeah, that's, that's right. And, and this it, is right where you can walk in, pedestrian access, right? And then it runs down, you know, to, to the Hyatt. Right. And that's that portion that's getting this $38 per square wow. foot per month in these, these big rents. That's only a half a mile when you think about it. It's yeah. just, it, you know, yeah. it's, it's really hmm. three long blocks. Wow. Last one, please. Last slide. Oh, we're getting really down to this. Yeah, so this uh, is just, you can kind of see an upward trend in yeah. rents um, between 2015 and 2018. And then last year, we, we saw a tick up in retail vacancy. Mm. There was a couple things outside of that prime zone right. of Kalakaua yeah. that took a while 
to get leased out. Right. Um, and actually, most of that is now leased up. So I think in 19, the vacancy is going to drop down to below, you know, below 2%. Okay, I mean, it's basically okay. virtually no vacancy. Right, right, right. Uh, one, between one and two. So, uh, so uh, this is 2019 and 2020, what do you see? I mean, I think that the rents are going to continue to go mm -hmm. up. I think that you see a new three-story Tiffany that's absolutely right. beautiful. Yeah. The new three-story Hermes flagship is about to open. Right. It, looks, it looks beautiful. Right. I can't wait to get So these to are world-class architectural designed uh, destination retail outlets. And I think when the other luxury retailers, just other retailers in general, kind of hear the sales that I'm sure are going to be generated mm -hmm. out of those locations, you know, they're going to want to come and be part of Waikiki too and the amazing retail opportunity there is there. Well, we have to end at, the, at this point uh, with your very optimistic uh, business growth uh, projections. Uh, we wish to thank uh, Andy Starn for his uh, great insights. But as you can see, he was in the trenches at the international marketplace. And Waikiki has evolved as a global destination. And for investors and business people looking at Waikiki as an opportunity, there are lots. I think 2019, 2020 will be unbelievable years. Also in hotel transactions and renovations as new people come in, uh, new owners, they're going to look at and uh, transform hotel properties again to world-class standards. And it will be a unbelievable uh, growth in the economy for Hawaii as the Waikiki is indeed the engine of economic growth in the state. This is your host, Ray Tsuchiyama, another great episode of Business in Hawaii.